Well, good morning and welcome to our online service this morning. Thank you for joining us. For those of you who don't know, I'm Stephen Halstead and my wife and I are members of Carlton Road Baptist Church. Of course, due to the pandemic, we felt it unwise to have services in the chapel. And so I'm speaking you, to you from uh, my home. Um, thank God that we have the technology and the people that will allow us to stream our services online. There's so much negativity around at the moment that I thought we should raise our thoughts and look on the positive side of life. This focus continues on from last week's service when David was looking at the subject of the Sabbath rest for the people of God. So this morning's service will be focusing on the hope that we have in God and his son Jesus Christ. So let's start our service this morning, and I'm pleased to welcome along our friend Carol, who'll lead us. Following Carol, we'll have a song, and I do hope you'll be singing along in the safety of your homes. So if you've got your coffee or your tea to hand, let's start this service and I'll hand you over to Carol. Thank you, Carol. Good morning. Our service today is on the theme of hope. Do you think the old way of church is going to survive? I can see the church being so different. I've received so much from the community over this past year. Socially distanced visits, shopping and medication deliveries, Cakes made by young ladies who used to come to choruses with mum, and they tasted delicious. Telephone calls of encouragement. Waving as people go past. And a lot of these people wouldn't certainly go into a church building. Jesus said, whoever does what God wants him to do is my brother, my sister, my mother. That encircles so much more than just church. My hope for this year is that we can share the gospel with all we come in contact with. If we want to see change, something to hope for, we have to plan ahead. I'm hoping to have my cataract operation in the near future. And I hope then I will see more clearly. And I hope we can see more clearly God's plan and our part in the year ahead. God is faithful and he strengthens us for all the tasks that are ahead. Even if we can't be hugged by our loved ones, we have the hope of being encircled in God's loving arms. Have a lovely service. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the words thy hand hath made, I see the I hear the rolling 
mouth that God his son a spirit I scarce can take it but on that cross that on that cross would you lift your voice come on Romans 8, verses 31 to 39. Nothing can separate us from God's love. What shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? Since he did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, 
Won't he also give us everything else? Who dares accuse us, whom God has chosen for his own? No one, for God himself has given us right standing with himself. Who then will condemn us? No one, for Christ Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us, and he is sitting in the place of honour at God's right hand, pleading for us. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity, or are persecuted or hungry, or destitute or in danger, or threatened with death? As the scripture says, for your sake we are killed every day, we are being slaughtered like sheep. No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loves us. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below, indeed nothing in all creation, will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Yes.
Heavenly Father, we come before you now thankful that we are clothed in the righteousness bestowed upon believers by Jesus. We know from your word that we all need hope in our lives, for it says to keep rejoicing in hope, be patient in tribulation, and to continue in prayer. Father, we know that hope is meaningless without the ability to visualize some future thing or event. We therefore pray that you give us your vision for our lives upon which to base our hope. As your word says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Father, the word also says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. From this, we know that hope without faith is dead. So we pray for the gift of faith to give substance to our hope. Father, we know from your word that faith works by love. Therefore, we also pray that we be empowered by love so that our hope may be made manifest. Father, we pray that all believers will be empowered with the fourfold gifts required to enable hope to be made manifest. Love, faith, hope and vision. May we all in these challenging times be empowered to further your plans. We ask all these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. And oh, my soul so weary When troubles come And my heart burden be Then I am still And wait here in the silence Until you come And sit a while You raise me up so I can stand on mountains. You raise me up to walk on stormy seas. I am strong when I am on your shoulders.
your shoulders you raise me up to more than i can be there is no Restless heart beats so imperfectly, but when you come, and I am filled with wonder. Sometimes I think I glimpse eternity. Hello again. As I said at the start of this service, I'm going to talk today about the hope we have in our God and his Son, Jesus Christ. There's so much that is wrong with our world, and that was true before the pandemic struck. We've been going through a tough time, and we're not out of the woods yet. Now, I'm not going to talk any more about this, because this morning is about good news. We need something positive in our lives, and isn't that the truth? We need to hear some good news. Well, we don't have to look far for it, because it's all there in our Bibles. And a positive effect of lockdown is that many of us have more time on our hands. What better way to use some of that time than picking up and reading our Bibles? Well, in fact, in this modern age, we don't actually have to pick up a book anymore. There are so many online resources. You can download the Bible to your phone, tablet or your laptop. You can even have it in a dozen different versions. The only one I use is called YouVersion Bible. This app not only has many different versions of the Bible, it also has verses of the day and lots of study plans. I re recommend you take a look at it. Also, okay, so now the advert's over and I have digressed a bit. I want to tell you about the good news. And what better time to start this than at the beginning of this new year, 2021. Okay, so you may be finding it hard to look on the bright side. Don't worry, you're not alone in that. But always remember, God loves you. And that's our starting point. Shouldn't that be enough? Well, perhaps not. And that's a bit controversial, isn't it? But you see, if God just loves us, but in a passive way, what good would that do? But that's far from the truth. You see, God's love is a love of action. It's a love of giving and guiding and guarding. And our Bible has so many examples of how God's love has impacted on the lives of those here on earth. You see, our God is love and he never makes a promise he won't keep. God made this world and everything in it. It says so in Genesis. And as David said last week, he did this in six days, and on the seventh day he rested. He made the sun, the moon and the stars. Have you ever gone out on a dark, clear night and looked up? Doesn't it blow your mind? All those stars, and many of them are not just stars, they're galaxies containing hundreds of millions of stars. And God created all of that, everything that you see. Doesn't that give you some idea of how amazing our God is? We try and contain him and make him easier to understand, drawing pictures and paintings 
of him, but he's far greater and more magnificent than our minds are capable of grasping. He's even outside of time and space. He's eternal. Our brains are not capable of grasping just how great and how magnificent he is. And yet, he loves us. He created us in his own image. That's Genesis 1.27. All through the Old Testament, Testament, he's looking after his chosen people, the descendants of Abraham. And though they move away from him, he never gives up on them. He never forgets them. For example, though he left them in Egypt for hundreds of years, eventually he sent Moses to set them free from slavery. Then he sent them on a path to the promised land. But again, his people rebelled against him, and therefore he kept them wandering in the desert for 40 years. But after the rebellious generation had passed away, he brought them into the land of milk and honey. But that wasn't the end of the story, as you know, and God's chosen people were to experience many trials, all because they failed to trust in God and follow his commandments. But that all stemmed from the original sin of Adam and because God gave us free will. The last book of the Old Testament is Malachi, who was God's prophet in Jerusalem. He warned the people of the consequences of disobeying God, but he also prophesied about the coming of a Messiah. Then all was quiet for 400 years. For all that time, nothing was heard from God, but he had not turned his back. He had not forgotten. But then on an ordinary night in a tiny village in Bethlehem, Jesus was born. God had sent his one and only son to save the world. And not just to be a saviour to God's chosen people, the Jews, but to all people. And all were to be saved by Jesus. All to be reconciled to God through the perfect sacrifice that Jesus was to make on the cross. Now I said earlier that the nature of our God is beyond our imagining. We cannot know him, and yet, when Jesus came, all that changed. In John 14, Jesus and his disciples were in the upper room on the night of his betrayal. The disciples were alarmed and confused, and it was then Jesus made it plain to them the nature of God. He said in verse 7, If you had really known me, you would know who my Father is. Then in verse 8 he went on, From now on, you do know him and have seen him. And to make it even clearer in verse 9, he said, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. Wow. Now, after all the time, that time has passed since Adam walked in the garden with God, finally, mankind has again seen the Father. Now, isn't that good news? We can know the Father intimately through his Son, Jesus Christ, who is fully God and was, for a time, fully man. He walked amongst us, shared our joys and sorrows. He showed us the nature of God in how he loved us and taught us how we should live. But he didn't leave it there. He reconciled us to God through his sacrifice on the cross. This wasn't a defeat. It was his greatest victory. This was good news. And Jesus said again in John chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. This is more good news. We now have a way to the Father. Before Jesus, there was a gulf separating us from God. Our sin kept us from him. But Jesus spanned that gulf by the cross. As we heard in the passage read by Christina from Romans, this is what Paul wrote in chapter 8, verse 31. What shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can ever be against us? And in verse 38, Paul said, I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels or demons, neither our fears for today, nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. And we can have that assurance in our lives too. Salvation is for all of us. We have a loving Father who will never leave us. 
Jesus is our light to guide our way. And when he ascended into heaven, he left the Holy Spirit, the third part of our triune God, to guide and comfort us. It's all good news. Now I know that there will be some of you today who are struggling with loss, maybe bereavement, illness or other difficulty. And you feel alone, isolated, maybe fearful and depressed. It is times like these that we can feel estranged from God. Perhaps we find it difficult to talk to him or believe that he is listening. I have a picture in my mind right now and I'm sure you will know which one I mean. It's the one of that beach with one set of footprints. The author is reliving his life and notice that during his life there were two sets of footprints in the sand, one belonging to him and the other to the Lord. But he noticed too that at the times when he was at his saddest and lowest, then there was only one set of footprints. The author questioned the Lord about this saying, I don't understand why. When I needed you most, you would leave me. And this is the part that really gets to me because he said, the Lord then replied, my precious, precious child, I love you and I would never leave you. During your times of trial and suffering, when you see only one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. You see, although this is a work of fiction, I think it sums up the heart of God. We can have confidence in God and his unfailing love. He was not going to leave us. He will always be there for us. As it says in Psalms 46.1, God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. It's when we feel weak, when we don't know where to turn, when we are low and feel lost, that's when God can help us, use us and empower us. All we have to do is to be open to his leading and to, has faith, and to have faith in him. So if you need help today, talk to God. Tell him what is troubling you. We may call it prayer, but it's just a name for a conversation with God. The good news is that he is listening. He wants the best for us and he has a plan for our lives. Just believe it. Let's read what it says in Isaiah chapter 40 from verse 25. To whom will you compare me? Who is my equal? Asks the Holy One. Look up into the heavens. Who created all the stars? He brings them out like an army, one after another, calling each by name. Because of his great power and incomparable strength, not a single one is missing. O oh, Jacob, how can you say the Lord does not see your troubles? O oh, Israel, how can you say God ignores your rights? Have you never heard? Have you never understood? The Lord is, everlast is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth. He never grows weak or weary. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Even youths will become weak and tired and young men will fall in exhaustion. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not grow faint. Now who of us wouldn't want to soar on wings like eagles? The Bible is a powerful source of wonderful encouragement. And during such times as these, you can do nothing better than to immerse yourself in the word and derive comfort and hope from the bottomless well of love. 2 Corinthians 1, 3, 4 says, Praise be to the God, to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. Good news indeed. So as I finish, it just remains for me to say, believe in the promises of our loving Father. He has you in his arms. God bless you and keep you safe. Amen. And now I'll hand you over to our music group for our final song. Thank you.
Let us pray. Living God, we thank you today for the message of hope that lies at the heart of the gospel, the assurance that whatever may seem to deny it, your love will emerge victorious. We thank you for your word of hope that runs through the scriptures, your promise to Abraham that through his offspring, all the world will be blessed. To Moses, that you would lead the Israelites out of Egypt and into the promised land. To Isaiah, that your people's exile in Babylon would be ended. To your prophets, that the Messiah would come. To the followers of Jesus, that he would rise again on the third day to the disciples, that as he had departed into heaven, so he would return. We thank you that you fulfilled those promises, just as you said you would. Your son born from the line of Abraham, your chosen nation set free from slavery, your people returning joyfully to, to Jerusalem, your promised deliverer born in Bethlehem, your power seen in the resurrection of Christ. And we thank you that in the fullness of time, that final promise will also be fulfilled your kingdom established when Jesus comes again in glory. You have given us hope. We thank you for what that means for us today, that we can live each moment with confidence and look forward with anticipation, whatever our circumstances may be. Whatever times of testing may befall us, though dreams may be dashed and plans thwarted, through life may be hard and the future look bleak, we know that your steadfast love continues and your purpose endures. Our trust not in things seen, but in the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things unseen, you have given us hope. Living God, we thank you that we can put our hand in yours and walk where you will lead us, confident that though all may else may fail, you will not. Though heaven and earth pass away, your words will endure forever. So we come in faith with joyful hearts and in glad thanksgiving to offer our worship and to dedicate our lives once more to your service. You have given us hope and hope does not disappoint us. Receive our praise in the name of Christ. Amen. I'd like to thank you all today for joining us in this service and thank you to Stephen for the word and everyone else that's contributed to this service. May the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. <laughs>